Tell me a story about a time that the school or an individual within the school faced a challenge and then through facing that challenge became better. The school might have been better or the person was better. I have a great, this is, this is young people feeling their power and their voice. Mm. So we're in about year two or three of this school and two of uh, one middle school, like probably the girls were maybe, their names are Izzy and Luna. They were probably like seventh and ninth grade. No, maybe even sixth and eighth grade. And they overhear a parent just outside the main room trying to force her young daughter, who's maybe five or six, to put an issue on the school meeting board to discuss parents attending school meeting. Ah. (laughs) And the child is saying, no, we don't want parents. No, I'm not putting that up. And the parent forced her daughter to put it on the board. Well, these two girls heard that and they were like irate, but they handled it in a way I personally never would have even thought of. Mm. They go over to the art area. We had this big, uh, you know, the poster board paper. We had it in yellow as well as we had lots of yellow construction paper. And they cut out starburst things. Like over three days, probably a hundred of them, all sizes, Mm. poster board and construction paper all these yellow starburst things and on it they wrote kid power Mm. and they ran a kid power campaign and it was around the time when the Sudbury schools were doing away with the assembly and giving the power to school meeting and the board Mm. and they sort of combined the two we ended up having a big assembly meeting, which was parents, staff and students. Mm. And they got, except for this woman and her friend, 100% of the parent vote because they put it on cars. They, They wore stickers that said kid power. They pasted it all over school. Everything said kid power. And all of the parents voted to disband the assembly, take Mm the parents out of it and let most of the decisions of the school be made by the kids in school meeting. Mm. From that day forward, school meeting has totally run our school and Mm. they have done an incredible job because they understood that they got the power and they took the responsibility. Nice, nice. It's been great. Right on. My job's so so easy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> and that's what I wish for parents if they would truly get how much kids are capable of educating themselves, of making choices for their own life that are good and healthy. And they only right. react when they're in terrible environments. When they're in healthy environments, they make 98% the right decision all the time. Right. And it's right. like just amazing. and and really beautiful to watch. Right, right. And, that, and that's on where top the... of that, most of them go to college with nothing we thought they needed. Right, right. But we don't right, push it right. at all. A few mm-hmm, of them start mm-hmm. their own business and go to college or one or the other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's where that's where the, the community is the guardrails for the community, <laughs> you know, um, is, is yeah. that the... The whole point is, individually, if you were to isolate someone, they become incompetent and quite actually ill uh, mentally, uh, because isolation is the problem. Relatedness is the is the context in which we have well-being and health, uh, particularly mental health. And so, and so, it's it's the cohesiveness of this community that allows. I mean, in educational terms, they talk about scaffolding. Well. Kids scaffold each other because mm-hmm. because they have that they draw on their collective wisdom. Yes. It doesn't matter that there's four year olds. Yes, four year olds are generally incompetent at a lot of things. But the point is they're not just four year olds. They are a whole range of ages, all the way up to young adults and real adults, you know. Yes. Chronological adults. 
in legal adults. And so that's the that's what people often don't immediately realize is how embedded that is, how how embedded even the four year old is, and that the four year old having a vote in the running of the school is not a hazard because it's a community making that decision together, not a four year old making that decision. And that's a hard thing for people to wrap their minds around, it seems like. But it's a group of people all being interconnected, having that access to their inner wisdom and sharing it in community that the four-year-old is hearing, whether it's in school meeting or in the middle of a game where somebody Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did something a little bit off in terms of respect in a game and there's a conversation about it because that's important because our major rules are safety and respect. They're in the middle mm-hmm. of a soccer game and, you know, and it's dealt with right then and there. Right, right. And the yeah. four-year-olds, they're all ears all the time to what the other yeah. kids are doing. It yeah. really is yeah. true. Very cool. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.